Dutch farmers are angry. They say plans by the government to reduce nitrogen emissions will harm their livelihood. The Netherlands is the second largest agricultural exporter. So what is this going to mean for global food supplies? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the programme. I'm Rob Matheson. Farmers in the Netherlands are blocking roads, setting fire to haystacks and even driving tractors through the streets of The Hague. It's all in protest against laws that regulate emissions produced by livestock, but are likely to have a major impact on the farming community and the larger economy. The Netherlands has failed to meet its emissions reduction targets, so permits for new homes and roads have not been granted since 2019 to prevent further pollution. And the government's introducing tough new rules. Its $100 billion food export industry, one of the biggest in the world, could be badly affected. And this is happening when the war in Ukraine is already putting global food supplies at risk. Now, we're going to bring in our guests in a moment. First, this report from Step Vassen in Nekarek in the Netherlands. Farmers have said they want to paralyze the entire country. They have announced that they want to block access to the main airport, Schiphol, other airports, the port in Rotterdam. The situation has been escalating between farmers' organizations, the farmers themselves, and also the government on the other side in the last couple of weeks. There have been farmers detained at certain actions. Police was involved. Uh, there has been aggression also towards the minister. And now here we are at the food distribution center, one of the 25 that are being blocked today by farmers and let's have a look around we see uh, the trucks here they were ready uh, to go to supermarkets full of food uh, meat dairy products you can hear the cooling uh, machine still running but they can't go anywhere because look at the other side there are tractors there are trucks there are farmers sitting here they say no uh, farmers no food so they say we want to let the people in the Netherlands know that uh, the farms can't be closed because they're very essential for food production around the country. Uh, the government has announced that the, the farms have to cut more than 50% of their nitrogen emissions. In some areas, even up to 90%. Uh, there has been research showing that the effects of nitrogen pollution on the ecosystems in the Netherlands is pretty dramatic. And the farmers uh, also say that these figures are not correct. They say that we want a better solution. The government has announced that they want a mediator uh, to be involved, but the farms, farmers have said this mediator is not acceptable uh, to us. They're sitting here, uh, they're waiting here for maybe two, up to two days. Uh, some of them, uh, we've spoken to them before, have already sold their farms because they were not uh, capable financially to run their business. Uh, you can see here slogans, uh, if there is no farmers, there won't be food in the supermarkets. That's what they say. Some have even uh, brought some hay, they're sitting here on it. Uh, they brought their wooden shoes. Uh, it's really a protest. Uh, they say they had no choice. Uh, we are fed up. And if you push us to the limit, this is what we're going to do. But the question, of course, remains today how the Dutch public will respond to this when there's no food or there's empty shelves in supermarkets today. So what's the plan that's caused so much anger? Well, Dutch farmers have been told to cut nitrogen emissions to between 12 to 70 percent, depending on how close they are to conservation areas. Those areas are part of what the European Union is calling Natura 2000. It's the largest coordinated network of protected areas in the world. Farmers whose land is inside natural reserves will have to cut by 90 percent. And those who can't do that will have one of three options. Switch to crop farming, relocate or quit the trade. OK, let's bring in our guests. They're all joining us from the Netherlands. In Zeewolde, we have Jeroen van Manen. He's a dairy farmer and a protest organiser. In Amsterdam, Natasha Oloman is a food and agriculture expert at the Worldwide Fund for Nature Netherlands. And in Gauten, Theo Mandersluit is a mediator between producers and buyers at Agracom. He's also a member of Agrati. He's one of the largest farmers action groups in the Netherlands. A very warm welcome to you all. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. Natasha, I want to start with you. This is about nitrogen and ammonia at its heart. 
What, why are they thought to be so bad? Well, ammonia and nitrogen specifically has a huge impact on biodiversity, especially in nature areas. And unfortunately, the Dutch agricultural sector is one of the major contributors to nitrogen emissions affecting biodiversity. In the Netherlands, we still have, uh, we are facing a biodiversity crisis. And this is because of decades of government looking away. And finally, the government has made a decision to do something about it. And this is causing a major disruption because farmers weren't aware that they needed to change. But basically, this is not a surprise. It has been going on for decades. And now there's finally an opportunity to make this change and to have the budget to, be, um, to, to enable farmers to actually transition to a more sustainable, nature-friendly way of producing food. Jerome, you're shaking your head there. Is this about nitrogen and pollution or is there something else going on here? No, well, we have, uh, we have a few different problems, but uh, the main cause of this all is uh, because uh, some uh, left-wing parties in the Dutch government want to have uh, a reduced uh, uh, reduction of the Dutch national herd, at least by 30 percent. Well, they wanted to have 50 percent, but that's the main cause of all. And when we look into the nature, the point like uh, Natasha Ullemans uh, was telling you about, uh, reports, uh, all of them say uh, over the last few years, 85% of Dutch nature is in perfect condition. Uh, of the 15% of the nature which is not in good condition, there are about uh, 1,500 ways to improve the nature. And uh, about 50% of these uh, 1,500 ways uh, is not even um, uh, done yet in the Netherlands. And nitrogen pollution is only one of them. So that's what the Dutch farmers are saying. Uh, when uh, some bit of nature, the 15%, needs to be improved, that's OK. But then we use all the different ways you can do to improve nature. And uh, nitrogen pollution is only one of them. So uh, in this case, uh, and what we also say as agricultural sector, uh, over the last uh, 30 years, we already reduced almost 70% as agriculture sector. So uh, on this point, uh, no, none other sector did uh, a reduction like agriculture did over the last 30 years. Mm. Natasha, I know you want to come in, but I do want to bring in Theo Mandeslaut here. The Dutch government, as um, Natasha was explaining, has brought together some sort of attempt at a solution, and yet it seems to be constantly rejected by the farmers. Why are none of these solutions acceptable? Uh, the Dutch government uh, doesn't uh, uh, is is only working in one way. Um, we as uh, we as, as the farmers' organization in the Netherlands or uh, offered uh, the Dutch government, uh, I think, almost thousands of uh, suggestions to do something, but uh, to do something to reduce uh, uh, nitrogen and this kind of uh, uh, and to uh, to uh, to help the nature, but. Uh, uh, it is not about nitrogen, it's about re re rearranging the public space in the Netherlands. And uh, this is the only reason why the government is not uh, speaking with farmers, but, uh, uh, but over farmers and not, uh, not, is, uh, not is taking the, the handshake what the farmers wants to give to the government, because we have, a bit, because we have the farmers give a lot of a uh, lot of uh, suggestions about uh, uh, lowering nitrogen, uh, uh, trying to uh, to make the nature better, to uh, to help the environment, to do uh, something with uh, with uh, some with with, uh, with the water qualities and everything more. And uh, the Dutch government just is telling something about the uric, uh, about uh, juridic, juridic, juridical goals and uh, not about uh, and nothing about. Uh, innovation and um, uh, and uh, uh, possibility solutions. Mm. So this is the this is this is the reason why we we that why we why we are in this way are protesting because uh, because the government is not listening in any way to the farmers. They just taking their own way and uh, going straight forward to uh, to reach their goals instead of looking at nature because mm. the farmers need nature to, be, to produce at the highest level in the world. And what at the moment is happening is that the government just telling something about, uh, about nitrogen and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, a, lot of, a lot of higher levels. But the, topic, the, but the, the, 
if this were really a problem, then they would also suggest to speak about um, our airports, about uh, freight, for, about, about the barges, about freight, about traffic, and this kind of thing. But none of them are involved in some with some measures. Only the landscape and the farmers uh, will be treated by our government. Mm. So this is not okay. Nastasia, let me bring you in there because both Jaron and Theo are saying that this is that nitrogen and the impact of nitrogen and ammonia is forms a small part of um, uh, of the situation. That in fact this is about a wider issue that the government is actually wanting to change the land use within the country. What's your response? How do you react to that? Well, my response is as follows: um, There is no doubt that biodiversity is affected by nitrogen in the Netherlands. There are numerous reports that are indicating that. So something needs to change, and not from an ecological perspective, but also from a legal perspective. And that's why the highest court in the Netherlands ruled that nitrogen depositions in the Netherlands and emissions should reduce by 50% in 2030. So, uh, but apart from that, I agree with the other speakers that there is more happening in the Netherlands because we also have a water quality. We have an air uh, quality problem. The water quality in the Netherlands is far below what is needed to comply with the um, Water Framework Directive in Europe. So our drinking water, our, our groundwater is uh, at the moment so polluted and agriculture is also one of the polluters of that. So apart from nitrogen affecting biodiversity, we are also talking about air pollution and water pollution. And this is also the reason I think why we need to have a transition of agriculture that is ticking all those boxes of things that need to change. And this major transformation of agriculture, even though it will affect farmers, it can also be seen as an opportunity to really transition a broken food system into a system that is good for nature, but also provides a future for farmers, a new future. Because the, the system that we are in right now is a system that is broken and is not working for farmers. Every day, five farmers in the Netherlands stop their business because there is no future. So the current system is not working for farmers, it's not working for biodiversity, it's not working for our health, because um, the air quality in the Netherlands is really below a um, level um, that is healthy. So I do agree with them that not only agriculture needs to change, but that we also have to look at, uh, at um, um, uh, traffic, at industries and so on. But the fact is, and that's uh, the, the thing with the nitrogen case, is that um, agriculture at the moment, and especially dairy farming, is contributing the most, with 60% of the national emissions is being caused by the, uh, mainly the dairy sector. So that's the start of the change, but I totally agree that we have to look much broader and that we have to look at um, a situation in which the current system in the Netherlands, both for food producing and the way we use our land, needs to be rearranged. Mm. And that means, especially for farmers, that a transition is needed, but that's why the government also put 35 billion euros um, in the budget over the next decades to help with that transition and to support that transition. And I would really, really value if farmers would come up with an offer in how they can contribute and what the price and the costs are that society also has to pay. Because I do think that this problem is not being caused by farmers because they are also a victim of the current system but that uh, the farmers are the solution and that they can help in bringing the Netherlands to a future where it's green, not only for nature, but also for right. us people. This starts, I'm going to stop you there because I want to bring in Jerome. Forgive me for interrupting you, but I want to bring in Jerome because he clearly is, has got very strong feelings about this. Jerome, explain something to me because from what I've heard so far, the government seems to have an end goal of improving the environment within uh, the Netherlands. So do the farmers. From what uh, Theo was saying, it's intrinsic to the farmers, it's important to the farmers that nature should be sustained, that their livelihood should be sustained. Wh where, is, where is this breaking down? Where is the problem with this, that when you're both working towards the same end goal, if you like, you can't find some sort of common ground to be able to move forward? But I wanted uh, to respond on uh, what uh, Ms. Natasha said uh, just right, right now. Um, it's not true, it's, and it's very hypocrite also. Whatever problem you look at, if it's nitrogen pollution, if it's methane, uh, if it's CO2 or whatever, uh, the use of antibiotics, Dutch agriculture is champion of the world. Uh, right now, when we focus on uh, nitrogen pollution, 
we can uh, the law which is uh, now uh, a plan from our minister uh, it will cause that probably about 40 percent of the dutch farmers uh, have to stop their business and production will have to get away uh, outside of holland you know every country in the world is on a lower standard for nitrogen pollution for co2 for whatever problem so when we get rid of dutch farmers uh, other farmers in the world need to uh, take care of the same production we need more land use. There's more use of water. Uh, all the problems uh, Natasha is saying, you know, you can say something about Dutch water quality and it all, always can be improved. We have innovations for that. But when you put food production to other countries in the world, standards will lower. So then uh, in 10 years time, the Dutch uh, citizens are eating food, which is produced on a lower standard than it's produced right now. You know, when we want to solve a problem, we have not only Holland in the world, but we need to see climate and uh, nitrogen as a worldwide problem. And then uh, we can uh, improve the world by getting to Dutch standards, not only to get rid of farmers in Holland, because it's only moving the problem away out of sight and, and nothing is solved. So it's, it's ridiculous and also hypocritical. Theo, let me ask you this, because from what I, if, if I understand Natasha, Natasha correctly, the government has put money in place in order to be able to help farmers transition from livestock, when this is predominantly livestock farming that we're talking about, um, to move from livestock farming into crop farming. It's providing money for farmers who feel that they're not able to meet the standards so that the farms will be bought out. Um, it seems to me as though the government is at least putting some money towards this. Let me ask you this, what is preventing yeah. livestock farmers from making the transition from animal to crop farming, um, the, the 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 biggest the biggest issue is that the government is was is has uh, unreachable goals in their um, in their uh, for themselves. They just and they only speaking uh, over farmers, not with farmers. They not uh, interested in any innovation or in any solution. What they reached also from the agricultural sector, we are we are working as as agricultural sector already for decades on innovation and on solutions for to uh, to reduce our um, emissions. And um, what's happening? What's ha what what's happening now is that our government in the past um, pointed on 162 areas of uh, wish nature. Uh, this nature, they want to have some uh, some habitats in it, which uh, which they want to have. Uh, to come, or they want to have to protect some 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 little insects or something. So that's really nice, and uh, we like this also as farmers. But the biggest issue is that um, with the, with if they using the, the nitrogen nit nitrogen goals, if we if we just empty the whole Netherlands, all farmers, all citizens, we still have a huge problem because we have. The nitrogen and the uh, the and the, and the um, uh, worst water quality, which is coming from uh, the eastern part of Europe, and what's flooding into your into uh, the Netherlands. So we can do what we want, and we can try to be, to, to to do the best what we have, but the, it is not reachable. It's not possible. Furthermore, it sounds really nice: 35 million euro, euros for the a million euros for the for the agricultural sector in the Netherlands for the farmers, but. This is not the truth. First of all, they don't have the money for it. And uh, second is that they, uh, se second is they have uh, to, uh, they have to um, try to improve something and uh, try to uh, help the farmers with uh, some changes, with, with some changes, but if you look at what uh, what was happening in a few weeks ago in our uh, one one week ago in our government, we had a Dutch farmer which getting uh, money from the government for his nature goals, and the Dutch government was telling uh, was telling him, okay, it was very really nice that you changed your uh, farm to nature living, and but this year we will end your uh, payments for your for all your efforts, and so this guy was totally totally lost and he doesn't know what to do because mm. his, comp his company's farm, he has to quit with his farm because the government is quitting to pay the, the money. And mm. the biggest issue is that the, our government is telling that 
they want to pay for everything and they want to do a lot of things and they want to uh, and they want to change and they want to have change but the farmers want also to change but our government is not trustable and this is the biggest issue mm. natasha do you think that given the, the the food crisis that the world is facing at the moment because of this, the 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 war in ukraine and the restrictions on grain and so forth do you think that whilst zero emissions may well be a great um, objective for governments around the world. This is not the right time for any government to, to be trying to bring in this kind of thing. It is the right time to make a change. And I, I'm, I'm honestly a bit surprised by the arguments that the two others, uh, Theo Manders and Jeroen van Maanen, are, are telling us, because they, I obviously feel that they are still in the illusion that the Netherlands is feeding the world. The Netherlands is not feeding the world because a lot of grains, also from the Ukrainian past, but also from Brazil, soy is coming to the Netherlands to feed animals. This, these are feedstock that can uh, easily be used directly by humans to eat. So producing meat and dairy in the Netherlands in a very intensive way, which has been causing a lot of damage to nature, a lot of damage to water quality and to our air quality and our health, is not the solution for feeding the world. The Netherlands is uh, being proud that we are the best producers, but the best producers in the Netherlands, it maybe refers to the amount of production that we are doing per hectare or per animal, but it has caused enormous societal and environmental problems. So if you look at, if you take that into account and the societal cost that it, it's taking, apart from all the subsidies that farmers need in order to make a living in the Netherlands, most farmers are dependent for half their income on European subsidies to, to survive. So the Dutch system is broken. And this is not only me as a nature conservationist saying this. This is what our government is saying. This is what many scientists are saying. So there is a change needed, especially now with the Ukraine crisis, because we need to, to feed the world in such a way that we use land efficiently. And to me, it's not a legitimation that you feed animals um, the same crops and the same uh, pulses that can be fed directly to humans. Mm. So I do think, especially in this situation, that we both need a rethinking of the way we are producing and the way we are consuming and how to, to support that. And nature, both in the Netherlands and worldwide, and biodiversity is not a nice to have for nature and for wild animals. It's a need to have for us as humans, because we are dependent on nature. If there are no pollinators anymore, then we don't have crops to eat. If we don't have healthy soils, then we cannot produce food in the future. Uh, if we don't have healthy water streams, then we cannot have drinking water. So I do think that the Netherlands, especially because we have the most intensive farming system in the world, we, we are basically a wake-up call for the rest of the world to change. Jerome, I, I, want to bring in, uh, I want to bring you in there because no. uh, on the back of, no. of what Natasha is saying, given the fact that we are in this worldwide food crisis that is facing and given the role that the Netherlands has been playing as one of the major exporters of, of, of food to the world, this would sound like it would be a good opportunity for the Netherlands to make the most of I'm that sorry, and to I be able to... to break in. I really want to break in into the frame that Just we are very the quickly, major Natasha, exporter. please. Yeah, we are not the major exporter in the world. We are importing large quantities and we are exporting large quantities. Yeah. The amount of food no, Natasha, I'm going, to, I'm going to stop you there. I take your point. I want to go very briefly uh, to, to Jerome. We only have about a minute left, Jerome. Given the fact, coming back to my original point, given the situation in the world, this would be an opportunity for the Netherlands to play a role in feeding the rest of the world. Would it not be ad to everybody's advantage to the farmers, for the farmers to find a solution to this problem and quickly and get back to what they do, which is producing food? Just very briefly, yes, if you that's right, but, um, Yes, well, Dutch agriculture can teach the world a lot of good things, and I think we, uh, but we, before that, we, uh, we need to have an agriculture in Holland which is big enough, you know, uh, when there's only 10 farms left, knowledge will be gone and we can't teach the world how to do it. Uh, we have uh, major solutions for all problems in the world. That's why uh, we are a world champion on every part of uh, whatever problem you have. Uh, Dutch agriculture is needed for that. So uh, I think we need to have strong 
uh, national agriculture sector. Jerome, we're going to leave it there, but thank you very much indeed to all three of you. I, I want to thank all our guests, um, Jerome Van Manen, Natasha Orleman and Theo Mandus. Look, clearly there's a lot of debate to be had here. Thank you too for watching. You can see the programme again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page, that's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Rob Matheson, and the entire team here in Doha, bye for now.